All right, so now uh, we're going to take this information here about complex numbers, and we're going to wind up using that and show you that finding products, quotients, powers, and roots is pretty easy when they're written in complex form. So that's kind of a neat little feature of that. Okay. So finding products, quotients, powers, and roots of complex numbers is easy when they're written in polar form. So I'm going to get a little space right here just to remind you that the polar form of a complex number. So remember how complex number written this way can be written in polar form. When you do, it's R cosine theta plus I sine theta. And you can see why that would be, because R, when it would get distributed, R cosine theta would be the A, and R sine theta would be the B. So that's the polar form of the complex number, so don't forget that. Okay, so what I'm going to wind up doing, let me go ahead and take some of that space out. All right, so what I'm going to wind up doing is show you something cool. So when you're multiplying, let me make this a little bigger. When you're multiplying complex numbers, you multiply the moduli. Okay, and then add the arguments. Okay, this is the R, this is the theta. And so if you have a number, like maybe the numbers will be in polar form to start with. That saves you a little bit of work. So here's one complex number written in polar form. Okay, and then the other one is 5 cosine 20 plus I sine 20. Now, sometimes they're written in rectangular form, and you have to change them into polar form before you can do all this work. But if they're already in polar form, then if they're in polar form, you just multiply the moduli and add the arguments. It's that simple. So if I'm trying to do Z1 times Z2, then I'm going to take the 2 times the 5, and then I'm going to have cosine, and it'll do 40 degrees plus 20 degrees plus I sine of the 40 degrees plus 20 degrees. Okay, so that's going to be 10 cosine 60 plus I sine of 60. And if the answer needed to be in polar form, you would leave it here. But some problems are going to want it in rectangular form. So what you do for that is you just think about it as 10 cosine 60 plus um, 10, I, I guess I'll put the I first, plus I times 10 sine 60. You replace the cosine of 60 with positive 1 half. You replace the sine of 60 with square root of 3 over 2. You multiply each of those by 10. Okay. And you wind up with okay. You wind up with that equaling five plus five. You normally write it. See how that would be five. You normally write it five i square root of three. Okay. And you could have left the ten outside if you wanted and done that and had the one half plus i times square root of 3 over 2, and then taking care of distributing the 10. So, but anyway, the 5 plus 5i square root of 3, that's the rectangular form. So depending upon what they want, they might want it in polar form, or they might ask for it in rectangular form. Okay. All right, so that's probably enough of an example of that. You can give those a try. And then we did a dividing one in class, but not everybody saw it. So let me go ahead and do a dividing one. And again, I'm going to do, do ones where they, they're starting out in polar form. If they weren't in polar form, we'd have to put them in polar form before we do this. Okay. So with this, it's, it's just what you'd expect. 
if for multiplying you multiply the moduli, for dividing you divide the moduli, which is the R's. And if for multiplying you add the arguments, for dividing you subtract the arguments. And, and that's when the numbers are in polar form. So if we have one complex number that's this, okay, five, 50 for r and 4 pi over 3 for the theta, and the other one is 5 cosine pi over 3, plus i sine pi over 3. Okay, then we can get ready to do the work to do the z1 divided by z2. Just turns out to be 50 divided by 5, and then you're going to do cosine 4 pi over 3 minus pi over 3 plus i sine of that same thing, 4 pi over 3 minus pi over 3. So that becomes 10. This would be cosine, that's 4 pi minus 1 pi is 3 pi over 3, which turns out to be pi, plus i sine of pi. Okay, and so here's your polar form right here. But for my rectangular form, I do 10, and then the cosine of pi would be negative 1. The sine of pi is going to be 0. So that means i times 0 would be 0. There's no imaginary part on this, and it turns out to be just the number negative 10. And that right there is the rectangular form. Okay. All right, and if you thought about that being plotted, it's like negative 10 plus 0i. It's the complex number that would be over here at negative 10. So the real part is negative 10, and then there's no imaginary part. So you're just over there to the left at negative 10. Okay, so dividing and multiplying, I just did one example of each of those. All right, so let's do a couple examples on powers. And then I'll leave roots. Roots take a while, so we'll do roots on the next page. So for finding powers, it's powers are really, you know, raising something to an exponent is really just repeated multiplication. So this is very closely related to what we did with multiplication. So, you know, if, if you had something that, and like a complex number, let me give you an example. If you had a complex number like 2 cosine 30 degrees plus i sine of 30. The type of question you're going to be asked to do is to maybe do z to the fifth power. Okay, so really z to the fifth power when you think about it is just z being multiplied by itself five times. So you could apply what we did for multiplying complex numbers to this. And you remember how we added the r's, we added the modulus, we would just add it five times. But adding five times is the same as multiplying by five. So you would say multiply, oh, let me, let me do this. Let me say this. You would raise the modulus to the power. Okay, so whatever the R was, you'd raise it to the fifth power. And then on the argument, so let me make sure I said it the way I meant to say it. Okay, so if you're multiplying something together five times, that's, that's raising it to the fifth power. Okay, so when you were multiplying complex numbers, you were just multiplying the R together a bunch of times. Well, that would be the same as raising it to a power. And then do you remember, let me back it up so you can actually see it. Try and get that back where it was. All right, so I don't want that to move when I do this. Okay, here we go. All right, so when we're back here, when you're multiplying, you would add the arguments. Well, if you're going to multiply something together five times, you would add the argument together five times. But if you add something together five times, that's the same as multiplying by five. 
So multiplying something together five times is like raising it to the fifth power. Adding something five times is like doing five times it. Okay. All right, so let's go back down here. So you raise the modulus to the power, and then you multiply the argument by the power. And it's just related to, to how we multiplied complex numbers. Okay, so if we're trying to do z to the fifth power, we're going to take the 2 times itself 5 times, which is the same as 2 to the fifth, and we're going to add 30 to itself 5 times, which is the same as multiplying 30 by 5. Okay. And so we wind up with 32 cosine 150 plus i sine 150. That is the polar form. So if they wanted the answer in polar form, you're, you're done at that point. If they wanted it in rectangular form, you would just think about the cosine of 150. Cosine of that would be square root of 3 over 2. The sine of 150 would be positive 1 half. Okay, you could distribute the 32, and that's going to be negative 16 square root of 3 plus 16i would be probably the best way to write that. And that would be your rectangular form. All right, so it's that easy. And it's kind of logical if you really try to think about it. So you raise the r to the power, so you do the r to the power, and then you do um, whatever the power is, you multiply your angle by it. All right, now what can be a little bit harder is when you're starting out, but this kind of shows you why you might want to do it. When you're starting out with a complex number that's not in polar form, okay? So I'm going to need a little room here. I'll put a few more spaces. So say I'm starting out and I want to know what 1 plus i raised to the 8th power would be. Well, what I'm going to do is rewrite 1 plus i in polar form that complex number. So I'm going to think about this, you know, that a is 1 and the b is 1. So the point 1 plus bi, if you think about the real and the imaginary axis, you can think about it as a point that's over here at 1, 1. So you can imagine this, drop that perpendicular, this is 1, 1, and then if you didn't already know, you could use the Pythagorean theorem to get that that was square root of 2. So that would be your r, wouldn't it? square root of 2. And then if you didn't already know the angle right here was 45, you could do the tangent. So you could do 1 squared plus 1 squared equals r squared to get this, but you know it's square root of 2. It's a special right triangle. And then you know that's at 45 degrees or pi over 4, but if you didn't, you could think tangent of theta is 1 over 1, so theta would have to be pi over 4 because I'm in that first quadrant. All right, so once you know that, then you can write this in polar form, because you know r is square root of 2, and so you're going to do square root of 2 cosine theta plus i sine theta. And then all of that is being raised to the 8th power. So that's what you're trying to do. So if you're trying to raise that to the 8th power, this whole thing to the eighth power, okay, then you're going to take the square root of 2 raised to the eighth power. But with the argument, what you're going to do, with, with the angle, what you're going to do is just multiply it by 8. Okay, so let me write this. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, and then the square root of 2 raised to the 8th power, one way to think about that is to think of how square root of 2 is really 2 to the 1 half. I do that a lot, so that turns out to be 2 to the 4th, or you can just work it out, think about it on your calculator or whatever. Do square root of 2, caret key 8, and it'll tell you 16. 
And then inside here, I have cosine really of 2 pi plus i sine of 2 pi. So I'm going to think about being over here at 2 pi. Okay, when I am, that's 1, 0. So cosine of 2 pi is going to be 1. Sine of 2 pi is going to be 0 again. And so I wind up having that turn out to be 2 to the 4th times 1, 16 times 1, have it be 16. Okay. All right, so that would be the rectangular form. I never really wrote the polar form exactly. The polar form would be if I right here put a 16. So it'd be it it kind of be like that, but with a 16 right here. Okay, or let I me mean, just squeeze it in. I could do 16 right here, and then cosine of 2 pi is the same as cosine of 0. You normally do the simplest angle. So you could do that. Oops. No, that's too messy. Let me try that. Let me see if I can undo that. No. Take a while. Let me just move that out of there real quick. Okay. All right. So the polar form would have been 16 cosine 0 plus i sine 0. Okay. And that would be the polar form. Okay. But see how quick it was? And if you think about trying to do that right there, 1 plus i raised to the 8th power. My gosh, that would have been 1 plus i written 8 times. You would have done a whole bunch of foiling and multiplying and distributing to eventually come up with that 16, but it would take you forever. Okay. So here's where I wanted to stop that video because there's a complication in uh, when you do the roots, just one little piece, and I want to not feel rushed when we do that.